Hello, everyone. Uh, you have Lee, Rico, and Sarah here for this week's Legislative Legit Update. Um, our education agendas have been pretty light lately, so we wanted to just take a second to dive into um, three of the school choice bills that are still out and working their way through the House right now. Um, so Sarah and Rico will talk to you about the two we heard this week that deal with STOs. Yeah, I can go ahead and start with uh, SB 1118. This one passed through Ways and Means this week. Um, it expands the eligibility of students for um, STOs to include students who were homeschooled, um, students who moved to Arizona from out of state, or students who participated in an ESA program, but um, didn't accept or renew their scholarship before um, enrolling in the school. It also increases the maximum scholarship amount an STO can award and the growth rate of this scholarship from $100 to $200 per year. Thank you. And then we also have SB 1041, which is an STO bill as well. And um, as of right now, the Department of Revenue grants uh, tax credits for individual contributions to uh, these STOs, the school tuition organizations. Um, they can't exceed, as of right now, a combined $5 million per fiscal year. Um, so what this bill does is going to uh, increase the aggregate cap over the course of the next four years. So in uh, fiscal year 2022, it's going to increase to 10 million, and then 23, it goes up to 15 million, and then in 2024, and every year following, it will be capped at 20 million. Great. Yeah, so both of those bills passed through uh, the House Ways and Means Committee on Wednesday of this week on party line votes. So we assume they'll be headed to um, the floor probably next week. And then um, the other one we still have hanging around is Senate Bill 1452. This is about the Empowerment Scholarship Program account. It was the one, if you recall, got caught up in a little bit of um, drama going between the House and the Senate, but it's um, in the House now. This is the bill that expands eligibility to include students who re receive Title I services or a student who simply attends a school with site-wide eligibility regardless of their income. It also allows ESA recipients to use both an ESA and an STO at the same time, um, allows a few new purposes for the ESA funds like transportation, and then also allows ESA recipients to get a portion of classroom site fund money from Prop 301, um, which was originally passed for teacher pay. So ASBA opposes all three of these bills. Um, and this last one, 1452, will be at House Ways and Means on Wednesday. So. Um, check your calendars, make sure to tune into those if you're interested.